So, documentation. Thank you everyone for coming over. Um, it's, uh, wait. It shows how popular documentation is. <laughs> um, do, do, should I speak in a mic or it's okay like this? Everybody can hear me? If there's anything, just shout. Okay. Um, so documentation is not really people's most favorite subject at Drupal conferences. It's kind of like a lot of developers, when you talk about documentation, they say like, well, you know, we have documentation in our code. That's enough, right? But it's not true. Because documentation in code is for developers. It's not for normal people, for mere humans, <laughs> for 90% or 95% of the planet. Um, documentation is very important. If we want to drive the acceptance and the usage of, of Drupal, of any software, we need better documentation. We need tools that make our tools accept, uh, accessible. So, what are, but what are currently the, the most used formats for documentation? Kind of right, right now, like, so we have this text documentation. Um, which, um, which I think actually in Drupal is pretty good in comparison to a lot of other projects. Um, but it's just really huge. And, it's, and because of that, it's a little bit less accessible. Um, and, but there's one thing that's really, really wrong with that. And that's that it's, um, it's, it's like because there's, it's driven by a community, um, there's no real standards of how it's done. So it's very different. Like you have one topic about a certain module is going to work in this way, then another one is going to be more minimalistic, and you get this really very complex, um, hard to parse structure that's not really structure. Um, now, there's a few good things about text. It's uh, ad easy editable, um, you, can, you can search in it, um, you can collaborate on it, you can do like wikis and things like that. You could translate it, or a lot easier. But, um, but it, it lacks a few other things that, for example, video has uh, for it. Um, video is much more interactive. Um, video allows you to get a lot of context without having to do a lot of explaining, which makes it more accessible for people that are just bumping in. Like I was reading on a, on a, a thread about documentation where they were asking, so how should I do my documentation for people? And then the kind of the common line of that was that if you're doing onboarding documentation, video is probably a good idea because it helps people to like get comfortable about all the complexity that's there. Um, uh, if you're doing more complex and more like, if you're doing documentation for more advanced users, you probably want a text-based documentation because it's faster accessible, it's easier findable, you can jump into it and, and find things faster. So, um, so, so there's these two worlds right now. You got text and you got video, and um, but there's 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 a lot of problems. With First of all, in Drupal, for example, uh, a lot of people are blogging uh, tutorials uh, and things like that. They just publish it and then it gets outdated. It just dies there on their site. A lot of people make video tutorials, but video tutorials have an even worse expiration date than text tutorials because video you record once and that's it it's like it's fixed it if your design changes if any images change you're stuck it's over um, unless you go and re-record it which is a lot of work um, and it's also expensive because you need a, a recording equipment like probably you want to buy it like there's open source tools but I think I've, I've been playing with a few things and the better, like, I think the commercial ones are, are, are quite a bit better. So it, it'll cost you some money to, to go and do video and, and you have to get used to it. So, now the problem with, with this setup is that there is basically no benefit for community. Like, we have these really awesome people in our community and are doing documentation for us. And they're spending a, lo a lot of energy, a lot of time, with, for very, very little recognition. Very few people will, will, like, you know, people that do modules, they're like the rock stars of our community and everybody knows them. 
and compare that to the people that have like thousands of edits in the documentation. And, and, and a lot of people don't know them. So there's, there's this very big unfairness in our community. And I think the reason for that is because um, we, like, we use the documentation when we get started with Drupal. And then once in a while when you're like looking for a new module, you go in and, and play with the with 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 documentation. But you're not using it as part of your deliverable for your customer. People are not like we are not documenting our pro pro projects enough because customers don't want to pay for it. They don't want to pay for this elaborate process of making a new tutorial or a new uh, documentation every time over and over again. With what we're doing right now, because we're not, we don't have something that we can collaborate on. Because, uh, like. A, a wiki or the documentation for Drupal.org is written more for onboarding than really for end users, and that's and and so you can't really take that and paste it into your documentation, your your site delivery documentation for your customer. So and and yeah, so the format is not merchable. It's hard to collaborate. Well, it's not hard to collaborate. Everybody can go in and edit. But it's it's hard to use it for what you would like to collaborate on. It's kind of like the problem with the App Store, and you know, and the features thing. It's a very similar problem. There's no incentive for us to collaborate on these things because because it's different every time. Now, there's a, so how could we make documentation more like code? How could we make documentation into something that's um, that you can just edit, that you can um, collaborate on, and that we want to collaborate on. That we can put comments on, that we can patch, that we can fork, and that we want to do all these things because it becomes a contributable unit. Something like a module that you put together to build your documentation for your customer. I've had a lot of discussions about this. I've done sessions about DITA, uh, which is a, a, an architecture for minimalistic uh, documentation, um, which would be able to do that, but it's hard to get traction for that uh, because it's XML language. It's complicated. Um, the people that are typically doing our documentation, um, like we have a lot of people doing documentation, often when they just onboard in the community, those are not the people that are going to make data documentation, and the, um, so so so. And, and they're volunteers. You can't force them to use a strict format. It's, or, you know, it, it's, it's really hard. So I've thought a lot about this problem. And I've gone over iterations, trying different things in the community, talking about it. Um, like I've had, like we've done a, a DITA module for Drupal, but that didn't get enough traction. Um, we've, uh, we've, we've done a bunch of different things. Um, but now we've bumped into um, um, a new thing, which actually, um, it, it started all with Peter, um, who's here in the room, um, coming to me on, on, on one day. It was like, well, we were doing a product sprint. So we were looking at um, making something that we could productize, because uh, I, I want to be a product company in Drupal. Um, so basically what we did, we did this um, kind of hackathon in the company to build, um, to try and build different products, different ideas. Peter comes to me like after day one, like not on the first day, when we were thinking about ideas, comes after day one, comes to me and says like, yeah, I got this thing, and, but you know, it's not going to be all that interesting because it's just for, for running presentations on, on Drupal conferences. Um, so you can, you can have a website and you could share to everybody in the audience on their screens, on their phones, or whatever, whatever is on the screen here, which is kind of cool. Um, um, but it's it's a kind of yeah, it's a cool gimmick. Um, but I was looking at that and I was like, what if you what if you use that same kind of technology to drive uh, presentations, because it was running on the website itself. So what if what if you use that kind of technology to um, to run people remote that are not in your session, that are sitting at home, sitting on their own computer, just following through a tutorial. 
So then we, we started playing with that. We had a first iteration, we did a first prototype. And with that prototype, I went to a Drupal user group meeting. And there was um, this guy in the audience, who, uh, oh, not in the audience, uh, in, the, in the user group meetup, comes to me and says like, well, actually that's kind of cool, but you know what you really have to do? You have to integrate it with Selenium. And I was like, huh, wow, okay, yeah, that's cool. Because you can, you know, Selenium, everybody knows Selenium here? Yeah? Or there's probably some people that don't. So um, I'll actually show you. Selenium is, um, this is Selenium IDE. Uh, Selenium is a testing language. Uh, I know that I'm, I'm a bit unfortunately positioned against the, the really cool testing, new testing platform we had, uh, which is going on, the session for it, which is going on right now. Um, Selenium is, um, is, is something that you could use to make sure that your site doesn't do regressions. So make sure that all the features that you've built keep on working, right? Which, that's the whole point of testing. But Selenium runs in your browser. So it's a, it's a, a testing language for doing um, tests that, that work, that interact with HTML. You can click on things, you can fill in fields, you can, you can check if an element is in your HTML, and, and that's how you, how, you, how you use Selenium. And, and the cool thing about it, sorry, you know with test case, I click on <coughs> records, and I can just click on links. Um, like this. Oh, it's not recording. Oh, it's uh, it's recording here. I think. I'm just going to start it. Um, okay. So you let's go home. And you see in the background, it's adding every step that I've done. I'm just click on some random links, see? And it records what you've clicked. Now, <coughs> so um, we took that idea, and, um, and there was another piece that we took, uh, and that's uh, called uh, Joyride. And I'll show you. Um, that's these guys. They made this pretty cool, really slick JavaScript uh, tool that shows these callouts on pages. And that you can use to make a, a site tour to walk you through a website, which is cool. So we, we combine this, we combine Selenium with Joyride <coughs> with Drupal. Drupal has a backend where you can interact, and kind of like a CMS for your tutorial. Joyride to visualize it, and Selenium to record it and to have additional selectors, because Joyride uses um, <coughs> CSS IDs. So it's it's uh, if your if your site is not designed the right way, you can't use it. But Selenium <coughs> runs on any website. There are some sometimes it will fail, uh, but but it's fairly robust, uh, and and you you know you can just. Uh, you can just record it on any website without having to first design it for it uh, specifically. So now I'll show you what happens when you take um, when you take that test. Let me show you. So Selenium, you can take the source code. Uh, that's just an HTML table, which is kind of a funny format, uh, but it's an HTML table with uh, three commands. I'll show you that in a moment. So you can copy that. <laughs> and you can uh, go to our website. This is not public yet, right? We're, uh, I'll come to that in a moment. You can go to our website and uh, I'm just going to create a node here. Paste the test in this field. See how simple it is. And I'm adding a tag, but that's not strictly necessary. And save. Right. So what it does, it parses the Selenium into the individual steps. 
Now when you go in into one of these steps, um, you have here the commands. This is the Selenium stuff. So this opens a page and uh, at this URL. Right? Um, but for example, this one will go and click on this link. Right? Uh, now, it's, using, yeah. it's using the display name of the link rather than the hyperlink. Yes, it does. That's the link. Um, what if there are two links on the page? I think I think the reason they do that is so that if you would change the back the the behind laying URL, they would still keep on working. Probably they're really testing the user interface. Yeah, it's really about user interface. Uh, but you know, if you would make documentation, it would be the same anyway, right? Because you would also say click on the link that says this, and not like the one that's marked up with this or that. Okay. Um, so, and what, what we also do is we have this here, this, this port field, which is our own thing, which is a step highlight. We did that so that we can uh, change the thing that's highlighted. So you could do an action on one thing, but put the text bubble on something else. Okay. And then I can just add a description. Um, hello, world. I save that. Okay. And I'll add one more. Hello again. Is the description area where you would put your documentation? Exactly. So now, uh, let's hope this works. Um, would you expect to hide the link out from that? Because you won't get much documentation if it's coming up as a bubble, or uh, did I misunderstand? I'll show you. I'll show you in a moment. Uh, if I can get this thing. So you're plugging into different oh you're plugging into your iPad. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. Yeah, it's picking up. Okay. See that? Alright. So we've just created a new walkthrough and it's called session, right? Remember? Well, it was titled session. Okay. So you click there, and it opens the page where we were. Now the demo is kind of failing. Something wrong. It was Drupal. Mm. Mm. Let's try again. Okay. Probably there was some, still something happening in the background. Remember Hello World? The first one. We click on it. Hello again. Click on it. <coughs> so um, what we've done, because we're using <coughs> Selenium, because we're using Selenium, you don't just get a text bubble. You actually get an action. So but what we've done is that, uh, in case you didn't click on that link before you click on next, um, it knows that you haven't clicked on it, so it will click for you. So you, somebody who's following the tutorial can just click next, 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 next. Um, it can, uh, I'll show you another one. Uh, this is the one that I've, like, if you've encountered me before, then probably you've seen this one <laughs> before. Um, uh, <laughs> Um, so this you've seen, but it can also fill out fields for you, like this. So, so um, um, you, you, could, you could use it even to record a feature and to replay it and then people can tweak that feature to their specific needs. So those are all different possibilities with it. Now what you are all, is someone going to see in their web browser at this moment, are they going to see Drupal.org slash user, or are they going to see the URL that's on the site where you post when, the tutorial? When you post this, well, when somebody starts the tutorial, they're sent to the page where it starts and then it walks them through it. So they're sent to Drupal.org itself. Okay. So this is playing inside your browser on top of your website. Now, 
you can change the start URL. Can I do this right now from my web browser? Uh, sir? Can I actually visit this? No, 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 this not. Um, um, I'll come to that in a moment. Um, so you can play the tutorial, the same tutorial, in different, on different sites. If you change the start URL, you could use it for explaining different Drupal sites, so it becomes portable. Right? It's not URL specific. It's using these actions, and you can start from a different URL. Um, so, um, is it path specific? I mean, are you forced to follow the same thread, or, or yes. rather than text, could I put something else in there and and it accept that as an alternative, but be prepared so, to substitute? Stuff further yeah, down yeah, yeah. That, that you 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 could you could substitute the text. Look, so it is one way, right? Right now, so it's a one tour. Go here, do that, do that, do that. But if you fill in text and it doesn't change the tutorial, like it's just another label, then that doesn't matter. So you could explain people how to do something while they're doing it, actually, right? Yeah. This is clear for everyone because it's. I'm, I'm still. I'm still working on the pitch. I'm. I'm, <laughs> I'm still exploring the space, and and I know that it's. It's a lot of information, and there's still a lot more. <laughs> uh, yeah. But he's asking a different question, yeah. which is, can you have a choice? So could you, you put can. in um, something that ended up going down a different yes. path and and handle both paths? Yes. The way that we've done that, um, you can make yeah. a string of steps or walkthroughs. Like you can string them together, one after the other, uh, but you, it's, it uses the minimalism kind of idea where you you only like the same thing you only document once. So you're not going to start from A uh, like if you ha have A to F, and at C you can choose different directions. You document from A to C, and then at C you have the splitting of the path to different directions. So then there'd be different sessions. It would be different C1, C2, yeah. C2, yeah. C2 yeah. would be different yeah. sessions. Okay. Yes. So, and, and um, the way that we're doing that is we're using um, something from DITA, which is called prerequisites and postrequisites, so that your tutorial can know what should happen before it and what should happen after it. Now, this opens up a lot of crazy ideas and possibilities, but that's, I, I think that's out of scope for now. But uh, like one, of, one thing you could do is say, to be able to run this tutorial, you have to be logged in as that user. And you could verify that. That those are those are things that are within reach that are possible, because you have um, you know, with with Selenium you can actually test what's on your web page, so you can you can check for variables. Right. So um, now, let's see. Um, we are almost running out of time, I think. What? How much time do you have left? You got about five ten minutes. Okay. So. Um, are there any questions at this point further? Right. So what are we? What do we want to do with this? Like, why am I talking about this? And let's uh, maybe I can make it smaller. Um, yes. Yeah. Perfect. So what I want to do, um, I see this as a tool that could really change the way we do documentation in Drupal but not just in Drupal, basically for everything on, on, on the internet that's configurable, right? Because it's using JavaScript and, and HTML, 